Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit here from PAX East 2013, and I am here with the fellows from Experimental Gamer Studios. We're going to be looking at Boot Hill Heroes. So why don't you introduce yourself and your game to the audience? Sure, I'm, I'm David Welch, uh, and I'm the artist and programmer on Boot Hill Heroes. Uh, and uh, would you like me to tell you a little about the game? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, okay, Boot Hill Heroes is a retro-styled Wild West RPG. Uh, it's made by fans who grew up in the classic SNES era of RPGs. Uh, we love playing games like Final Fantasy and Earthbound and Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG, Secret of Mana, and now you're seeing a lot of games like that these days because people who grew up playing those games are now old enough to make so their own. Yeah. So there's kind of like a, a new renaissance of these games. So Brutal Heroes is, is, is styled like that, but it's, a, it's, a, it's like a spaghetti western theme. All right, so I'm also noticing you actually have multiplayer in this title. Yes, well, the, the game can be played for up from one to four people, okay. and uh, it's pretty simple how it works. There's four characters that you, that you gain, and uh, you can allocate different characters to different controllers. So you can have two players, three players, you can have one person controlling one, another player controlling three, any, any combination you want. All right, well, let's get into the game then and see how it goes. All right. So this is a, a custom level we made for PAX just to drop everybody in and see all the characters. So in typical RPG fashion, you don't start with everything. So we just wanted to show that off at, at a convention so you could see it. So I started the game, so I'm controlling everybody, but it's really easy to drop people in. You just go to here and you allocate different controllers. You have controller two, so yeah. I'm gonna give you these middle two characters like that, okay. and you're in, that's it. But the uh, the person controlling the lead Leads character the steers around, the party. Yeah. You can press select and I can put you in the lead. That puts Doc's leading now and that's you, so you can walk us around. With just the thumbstick. I got it. Mm -hmm. There we go. And while someone's walking you around, we wanted to make cooperative play as easy as possible. So while you're doing that, I got a lot of stuff I can do. I can open my equipment, and I can look at my stats, change my skills around, and then we're in a fight. I found a buzzard. Yes. Buzzard and a couple scorpions. Brought a big sticker on with it. So oh, so this is actually, it looks like it's in real time. Yes. That's another thing we wanted to do to make uh, the cooperative play a little more fun is that uh, you, it, it's it's a command-based RPG, but it's not really a turn-based RPG. You select commands, and uh, you have this this uh, power bar that generates in real time. And uh, you, if you have enough power to do a particular attack, then you'll do it. If not, then it just queues it up. This way, you can you can manage multiple people pretty easily. And it moves in real time. If everybody's charging an action, it'll go much faster because it'll just skip ahead to whoever's next. You know, I've been looking for a game where I could set buzzards on fire in real time, <laughs> and looks like we finally found that. Yeah, I, I believe I could also uh, have a skiller to poison things, so that's pretty useful. If the status elements play a big part in the game, there's there's a, a lot of them you can do. Okay, we're it's our, it's our first battle. We're already losing here. I'm sorry. Everyone on account has just got gangrene for no apparent <laughs> reason. How did that happen? I think so. I don't. I didn't catch who it was. I was talking and not, didn't have my eye on the ball there. I believe it was uh, Kid went down with gangrene. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, you can, there's a number of different, if you if you fall in battle like that, you'll be fine the next battle, but you'll have a wound, and he's going to have gangrene when he wakes up. Hopefully we don't all get wiped out. Is dysentery simulated in this game or not? <laughs> um, I don't know if dysentery, I don't know if we've gotten to dysentery, but we haven't figured out exactly all the wounds. I know uh, there's gangrene, there's... Uh, consumption, there's a few other strange ones. But don't worry, we can take him to a doctor and fix him up. <laughs> well, I'm going to use patch up on Kid, which I assume is some kind of healing. What patch up, that actually removes his wound. It's a little misleading because people think it will revive him in battle. But it will re remove his, his wound when he wakes up, he'll have it. And that wound, it's going to affect him in battle and make it a little weaker. That was a fairly tough encounter considering we just ran into it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so there we go. It's interesting to see that you can actually manipulate equipment and things like that while moving around otherwise. Yeah, we wanted it, we really like to add multiplayer to these games that we love, and if we're gonna add it, why don't we just go and add, try to add it as easy as possible so it's like, you don't have to like stop the whole game in order to, uh, to use your menus. Oh no, a stoat, anything but a stoat. <laughs> We're gonna get murdered by these things, aren't we? That's, that's these happen. things are kind of tough. 
I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. This, He's this guy in. sucks at fighting. <laughs> He's just been taken down I, by a stoke. <laughs> this is unacceptable behavior. I, I Why do we bring him along anyway? <laughs> I think he was still not quite recovered from that last battle. After you win a battle, you heal a little bit, and if you walk around the map, you heal a little more. I don't think he quite got back his uh, footing before we ran into these guys. Now, these guys like to dodge, and that's something else you can do in this game, is you can activate these stances like dodge, and uh, then, then, then he'll maybe attacks will miss him, and we'll end up wasting all our power trying to hit him. But there's counters you can do to that, like Doc has a move called Cold Cock. If he does that on something dodging, they'll drop that stance right away. I just want to point out once again that we're getting our asses handed to us by a stone <laughs> right now. This is not this is not a cool thing. I don't know what Moonlight does, but I assume it's useful. Uh, that will heal somebody. All right, well, that's what I'm going to do with it. Let's see if we can stun this nasty little thing. I don't think that did the job. There you go, I want whatever that is. All right, so this little stony boss that has a, a power that crashes the game, which I think is a little bit OP, <laughs> something you might need to balance. It's a meta a meta enemy. I, I, I'm not OK with that. <laughs> I've had too much better. I played too many Dota games. Please no. All right, we're going to fight the stone again and hopefully not suck. There, I've oh, stunned oh, the stone. Oh, good. You got him to drop his dodge. Now I'll, I'll yeah. jump in here and uh, kick the crap out of him. Yeah, he's trying nice. to... See that, that white line there, that's that's like the cost of the of the attack that they're trying to do. Yeah. You don't really know what it does, but you can kind of guess. I'm guessing it's dodge. No, it's sucker punch. How how does it sucker punch? What? <laughs> they're vicious. <laughs> He's on fire, though, so maybe that'll help. <laughs> He's on fire, so maybe it'll help. Yeah. It's probably going to jump at us. In fact, he just burned face. up. We didn't even have to hit him there. He nice. just, he just fell burned to death. Just All burned right. up. I'm going to try and cold cock the stone again. Yeah, let's see if that actually works actually, out. Actually, there we go. All right, okay, you stuck. got him. All right, so I actually canceled my poison last because that was going to go off first, and it would have probably missed him, so I wanted that. Yeah, yeah Polkak hit him so first. So you slowed it down. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of cool to see that, the way uh, that the combat system is very active. So yeah. you end up having to do your attacks up in a particular order and then time them. Uh -huh. I imagine they won't steal again. We ate them. There we go. While you let your guard down, we're doing If you want to go up and to the right, there's a little saloon there. You can talk to a few people. Can we fight the horse? Uh, no. Well, now I'm disappointed. <laughs> and here we are at the saloon. My priority was to head into the saloon. That's just the way that it goes. All right, let's have words. Now the question is, what do we, what do we want to eat, if anything? Do we even have any money? Yeah, we started a hundred bucks. Nice. So Doc here is going to eat. Cornbread, maybe? Where, where would they pie? find oysters in the Wild West? <laughs> Eat a shaven haircut. Sounds <laughs> delicious. Fried potato. You can dodge. They'll also give you a shaven haircut, and you can also stay here the night. So you just bought cornbread. So now you have like this perk down here at the bottom of the screen. That will okay. give Doc a little benefit in battle. All right. I think it, it uh, heals you a little bit. Nice. We okay. talked to these uh, s these uh, scary-looking guys. That we can fight them. All right. Other people will just talk to us. We just to immediately fight. start fighting in the middle of the bar for no <laughs> reason. Punch him in the face. There we go. All right. He's, he's using a tumble now. All right. I guess I missed that. Let's try it again. All right. He's stunned. Beat the crap out of him. Tumble's a little different than dodge. Uh, it only works once, but it always works. Okay. Fair enough. All right. We've disarmed him. And we set him and on, he's fire, on fire. And he's poisoned. So he's having a bad that, day. That should limit him quite severely, he's, I think. He's going to try to keep tumbling, though. Yeah. yeah, we'll see about that. So what platforms are you targeting for release with this game? Uh, well, it's going to be an Xbox Live Indie Games, as long as the Microsoft doesn't pull the plug on that completely in the next few months. Yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, it'll still be on PC. And uh, I think next week we're going to leverage our, our, PAX, our PAX exposure to try to get uh, uh, greenlit on Steam. Sure. Now, what kind of game length are you looking for with this? Uh, obviously, it is an RPG, so in the classic style, people expect to be able to sit in their bedroom and waste a lot of time with it. Yeah, well, we um, we were going to make uh, an RPG that's like 30 to 40 hours long and charge $15. Instead, it made more sense to divide into three parts. So it's a 10 to 15 hour RPG, three of them, and for $5. Yeah, fair enough. So Sounds totally reasonable. This way, of a chance, people can like try the first part, and they don't have to try the second if they didn't really like it. 
hopefully they do, and also uh, we can sort of get the feedback that people have on the first part and, and uh, adjust the game or see if we want to change anything. Now, you mentioned earlier the, the idea, and this is actually probably one of the most insightful things I've heard on the subject of this kind of art style so far, that the people that played stuff like Final Fantasy and Secret of Mana and things like that are the guys who can now make games, and that's why we have this sudden resurgence of 8-bit, 16-bit, these kind of style of RPGs. And, you know, is that your sort of professional analysis of why we have so many games that are suddenly now in this art style? Um, I wouldn't call it a professional analysis, but it makes it makes sense to me. I've talked to you know, other people that are, are, are doing kind of a similar thing, and uh, I mean, we're all just fans that really love those kind of games, and there's not really a, uh, a lot of people making them, the kind of games you want to see anymore, sort of a niche demographic. Let's have words with this fella. Uh -huh. I just really want to fight this horse, I'm sorry. <laughs> a horse bit me as a child. Explore all the boxes. If you push uh, select, it'll change party leader. If you if you didn't want to walk around anymore, oh, sure. it's actually back. I, back. It would be select on you know an older right. controller. There we go. You can so have it. There, I'll take. See, there's uh, there's some trick in me. See this cactus here? Okay. It's not really a cactus. But why why is the cactus attacking us? What? That is question. Uh, that thing is not a real thing. <laughs> I don't want to punch that. It's a terrible idea. Set it on fire. Nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be oh, sure. Yeah, he actually had the skill where if you punch him, if you use any kind of melee attack, you'll take damage. Yeah, I'm going to shoot him in the head. That seems like it might work. There we go. Look at zombie cactus. He, he, he gets on oh, fire pretty well. Can't have any of that. He's not dead yet. Set him on fire again. There's only one thing better than fire, and that's more fire. Now I suddenly feel kind of sorry for him. I think we just <laughs> kind of disturbed him from his natural I, habitat. I'm pretty sure he started it. It's all right. He didn't die. That's fine. Yeah. There we go. I'm okay with that. There we go. So you start the you start battles with those four different attacks, and you can only have four at going on at once. But if in the, your menus here, you can change them. You can swap them out, pick one, and change it to a different thing if you if you want to try some other ones out. Okay. You'll eventually learn, you know, a few dozen different yeah. ones, and you Maybe can kind of customize what kind of character you want to play. You want to like focus on healing or supportive attacks or offensive or a combination of both, sure. and then you can just, if you don't like it, you can try something else later. All right, so okay, I think that's uh, what. Gonna move over if that here. Beats, so that's kind of a finishing move. All right. Fight if I am his weak point. All right, we'll grab that. No, I think I messed that up. No, I didn't. It's right there. There's there a bull go. around here. Oh, there he is. He's wandered down Punch here. Punch cows. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> it's a prized bull, and we're beating the crap out of it. What the hell's wrong with us? <laughs> are these guys really heroes, or just a bunch of douche, douchebags <laughs> well, that go around at night tipping cows over? I'd say our, our PAX demo here is sort of light on story and more on the senseless violence. Definitely. I'm trying to think where a, a cow's weak point would be. I assume it's in the eye, by the looks of it. <laughs> and if you push a uh, Y up here, when you're pointing to an attack, it'll actually tell you what something does. Nice. All right. Well, we're about to unleash hell on this cow. He's, uh, he's poisoned. He's pretty badly hurt now. One more thing. You can always push X in battle, and uh, you, you can still uh, select moves, but it'll bring up this... It'll t toggle this oh, clock on and off, thing, just in case it's and it'll, a little bit it'll uh, stop our battle clock, so nothing right, else will happen. There we go. So in case you want to stop and think about what's going on, and thank God we saved the it. town from the mischievous cow. All right, I'll say something that may be going a little bit too far, but if you talk to this lady, also uh, not a real uh, word, I just really saying, like a nuisance, so you can straighten them out for me. Okay, no problem, lady. We'll do that. Okay, it's rebelling against authority. <laughs> it's rebelling against. Why is everything trying to kill us? He, he just uh, acting foolish. We'll, we'll we'll set him straight here by setting him on fire. Is it? I'm just saying you can't it's, really it's get tough, away with the whole. Oh, love. he scurried off. He's we, on we, fire. He's made a positive influence in his life. He's, <laughs> he's really turned his life around from our encounter. Well, you know, I find this game very advice. disingenuous. <laughs> oh, that's a typo. It's not a journal store, but hopefully we'll fix that one. So, uh, I take it uh, spell checking is not high on your priority at the moment. 
So you can buy some new stuff. Uh, you're playing Doc, right? I'll buy you this gun. There you go. Nice. There you go. We got a gun. There you go. You're welcome. A legal weapon. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, this is a pretty good thing you can get. I want to buy that for us. It's the most overpowered $4.50 item I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, this is good. Oh, okay, we don't have enough money. Alright, I forgot. You're gonna bling yourself out now, money. good lord. <laughs> so you, you can equip that gun if you want. I'm gonna equip the, the, the moccasins I just bought. Alright, where's my actual weapon? There's your gun, then go on down okay. to Sawed Off. Select that. Sweet. Sawed Off shotgun it is. Uh, back up, we're done. On where we go. Okay, that bull's back. He's back <laughs> again. How did that happen? Is you do realize we shot him in the head a few times, right? He respawned. That's he's, he's a dangerous man. So uh, those moccasins there, you can buy uh, trinkets in the game. They give you little special things that help you in battle. Like that particular thing lets me start the battle with 50 cent power. Yeah. So, so I can immediately yeah, just smash him pretty good before he even gets an attack off. Now he's charging to 8, which is pretty dangerous. So I'm going to trip him. That brings down his power. So See, in this game, you don't, you, notice you don't have any items at all you can use in battle. You don't yeah. have... Phoenix so down, signs. No consumables of any description. No, instead you want to focus on not getting hurt at all. Okay. Like, rather than getting hurt and finding ways to heal. Oh, okay. So, he, applying he, stuns, knowing what's coming, using dodges and tumbles and things like that. Yeah. It's an interestingly more active way of doing things rather than, oh, it's hit me. Pop the potion, I have about 95 of these in my bag somehow. <laughs> yeah. I was never really a big fan of just drinking potions in battle. No. Yeah. Kind of, I think it encourages drug use, quite frankly, in children, <laughs> and I'm not okay with it. <laughs> And I got okay. the bull's eye out of that, incidentally. <laughs> oh, oh, It'll nice. be okay. He doesn't need both eyes. Naturally. But so you get these uh, materials in the game, and what they're for is you can you can sell them for money, and that's how you get money in the game. Bulls generally don't drop cash, but you can, they'll drop eyeballs. You can sell those for money. You can also use them to uh, imbue your weapons with special tags. Like I'll, okay. I'll show you how that works. Like For example, let me find a good example. So, like, there's three slots there. There's It's scrolling, so it's hard to see. But uh, the first one is stun, the second one's disarm, and the, and the third one's empty. So this weapon actually has a chance to stun and disarm the enemy while it's being used. And the, the, the blank one means I can find a guy who can actually imbue it with whatever tag I want based on what materials I've collected. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, he has a larger hat than me. Can we fight him? This guy? Yeah. Uh, we can talk to him. Uh, Apparently not. <laughs> it's I, the entire thing we decide to shill. Nothing but shilling. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Damn it. We wanted to put him in the, in the demo because he plays a pretty big role in the actual game. Yeah. So it's sort of a, a little nod to, for us, not to nobody else. All right, I'm looking to. I was trying to stun this guy. I'm. There, there right. Feel free to set the stone on fire. Stone setting me on fire, I think. This is not how. Oh, that one there that keeps coming up? That's because if you got that uh, that that perk you got when you when you alone bought uh, something to eat at the bar and left us all hungry. Ah. So it's helping you out in battle a little bit here. Because right. it's Keep like earlier on. when a uh, kid was had gangrene, that's like a negative thing that goes down there. You get positive ones too. Ah, nice. Okay, now they're dodging. I've got to finish these stoats off before we round this up. I'm sorry. I've got a vendetta against these little bastards. There we go. So I have to ask, who the hell wrote the soundtrack? Because okay, it's, it's uh, really it's quite interesting. The, the, the music is done by uh, Jake Kaufman. He's a pretty prolific composer. He's done the music for Double he, Dragon Neon. Yeah, I was going to say, I've heard of him. Blood Rain Betrayal, Retro City Rampage. Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of games. Uh, so we're really happy that he, he worked on this game. We're eternally grateful for his support. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of games that have retro-style soundtracks, and this one actually sounds good, so that's a start. <laughs> a lot of them are just uh, really bad MIDI versions. Of oh, this things. is your dog. He follows you around. And, uh, I was going to say, so we don't punch him. All right. <laughs> Most of the time, no. Now, okay. oh, damn it. One more, one more Vulture. Let's see. All right. We'll I fight one more Vulture, it. and then we'll wrap it up. Vultures and scorpions living together. It's madness. <laughs> There's, there's a perfect place to wrap up. Uh, Indeed it is. Yeah, punch shouldn't set on fire more bulges. So what are we looking at for release date on this game? Uh, as soon as the bugs are fixed, then we can polish it up. Yeah. Uh, all the pieces are there. Uh, just got to fix the bugs. And since 
We don't know how many there are. That's why they are considered bugs. It's hard to nail down a specific date. But uh, that's the status of the game, at least. All right. Well, we just smacked the crap out of that thing. There we go. Stun on him. Finish him off. So are you restricted to the four characters that we're seeing here in the demo, or are there others in the game that you can I know, just, just these four. Okay. Is there any, I guess there's a specific reason why they're all traveling together attacking scorpions. <laughs> there will be, yes. Of course, it, it, it's, uh, it's RPG, so you start out with one character. Yeah. It takes a while before you get the second, then the third, and the fourth. It eases you into it. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so this... Actually, the rest of this demo involves taking this tr a train to the woods and then fighting a boss and doing some other stuff. But I'm 90% sure that the uh, perhaps will lower the update and it'll crash the game. But we I can, of course, we yes. can of course try it. Let's give it a shot. All right, cross your fingers. We're doing the train. Would you like to wait for the train? Yes. Honestly, uh, it won't break right. the game. It's actually working. It's not breaking yet. That's always good. Or the train with Woods. Okay, we're getting on the train. Crazy. Okay, I'm very oh, surprised. Oh, first class as well. All right. I'll see how it is. Maybe we have time for the boss then. If we run to him, we might. How many? How long will it take to get there? Uh, just uh, 30 seconds. I'll all just, right. We can just run past the other encounters. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. There's me in the game right there. I put myself in the demo. If you talk to me real quick, I get to the other way it goes now, get things stuck through swapping advanced other ones. And if you sometimes when you talk to people, they give you uh, perks themselves. So now ah. I feel determined from my own advice. Fair enough. So the out out isn't a boss then? <laughs> no, that's, you don't fight a, a killer outhouse. It wouldn't He's actually surprise me in any way based on what I've seen so far. Look out, it's a very upset looking bear. <laughs> Or is it a dancing bear? We're not entirely <laughs> sure at this stage. All we know is just we're violent people by nature. Mm. Okay. All right, let's maybe stop the bear. Maybe what, what advantages we had going into this, but we'll be okay, maybe. I'm just spamming stun on it and then probably realizing, oh yeah, it probably doesn't work on a boss. No, it does work on a boss. There we go. Nothing but stun all the time. There we go. Oh, he's, now he's, he's afraid. We got him a, a, a fearful Afraid of what attack. exactly? We I, think the, I think the whip had like a fear tag on it. Okay. Oh, that was Someone's painful. in trouble. Yeah, I'll deal with that. If I can remember the name of him. There we go. It should right, be fine. Let's do this. Let's see if I can get a poison off on him. Exploiting. Exploiting. Now, I didn't get a chance to talk about this story. I don't want people to think that it's all running around killing animals. <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a lot more going on. And that you know, it's just a, it's a, you know, it's an RPG, so story's the main focus. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're pretty happy with how that's turning out, and now we're really happy that people seem to be enjoying the the combat here in the game. Is the, uh, is the style that you currently gone for with the strange sense of humor something that it's just there for the demo? Is it very pervasive throughout the game? Uh, I'd say it's much more pervasive in this demo. So it's a little bit more spread out in yeah. terms of the jokes. Okay. The, yeah, the, the regular game is a lot. It, it does have some lighter elements, especially in the beginning, but then things kind of get darker and more serious sure. as you go on. All right, fair enough. It's not all about punching bears. <laughs> I think we're doing okay. Like, he, he's almost dead, and we've got uh, uh, Rosie's on her last legs, and the uh, moon's not too good, but I think we've got this guy covered. Yeah, I'm just going to keep spamming stun and hoping for the best. This is work pretty well. There we go. Uh, today, what? He's uh, wanted up with... He's full of bullets. All right, I want to show you. So in here are the hats. Different, I put some hats on these chests. And how hats work is that's how you learn different skills. You can actually equip them like so. And uh, you get a new hat. It ah. teaches you new skills. It also makes your sprite wear it. So I got this little hat on. I shall wear this headdress. I guess I can't. No, I can be equipped by moon. Let's not do that. Rodeo hat. No, Stetson. Uh, you're no. going to need the pilgrim hat. There, there you we go. go. Sweet. So how do we know which skills that you learned? There? Ah, does well, it? Uh, yeah, you got a. If you go to the hats, you can uh, just click on it here. Learn bounty times thirty, protect times ten. Ah, I see. That's like okay. the learning rate. Sure. So it's sort right. of like a hat-based job system. 
pad based drop system, always good. So now you need to get greenlit and do a pre order offer where you actually allow you to get TF2 hats. Obviously, that's the <laughs> logical thing to do there. Valve better get on that. All right, folks, that pretty much wraps us up here for Boot Hill Heroes. Thank you very much for showing us a game today. Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the premier Western bear punching simulator <laughs> provided by the guys over at a very much experimental games. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Thank you.